Hello, everybody, and welcome to our Women Together experience. There we go. Um, it's wonderful to see you all today um, at our Women Together Connect. I know that some of you have already started to say hello in the chat, um, which you're welcome to do on Zoom or on YouTube, wherever you might be watching and connecting. Um, my name is Antoinette, and I'll be your host for this uh, conversation. It's wonderful to be here together. Um, I'll tell you a little bit, for those of you who haven't been here before, a warm welcome. And for those of you who have been joining um, every week, we have been holding these um, connect conversations in order to be able to just stay connected with each other in what seem to be quite trying times. So it's wonderful to all be in this space together. Um, so a little bit about Women Together is that Eileen Fisher, um, who is a ethical fashion designer, she started to um, not only develop clothing that allowed us to feel comfortable and confident in our bodies, she also wanted to share the leadership practices that um, that really got her to a place where she felt she could share the idea um, and then, you know, to be holding it as it's, as it's grown. Um, so in order to do that, we do some kind of personal introspection and um, healing in order to kind of free ourselves and be our best selves in the world and make our best contributions. Um, so that's included a lot of different bodies of work, um, but it also has really been including um, taking these tiny practices. So it's not just going out somewhere and doing the work out there in the world, which is incredibly important. It's also about doing the work in here. So deep within um, each of us being able to support ourselves and support um, our own ability to, to grow. Um, at whatever point in our lives. Um, so it's wonderful to be here with you all. We had started doing these um, programs in person in New York um, as a kind of hybrid online and in-person experience. And it was pretty incredible to see what was happening and the kind of um, connections, the power of women coming together is just so um, magnetic. Like it's just kind of build something. Eileen would probably referred to it as magic in, in some ways. Um, so there is just something happens when we come together as women. Um, so it's been wonderful to have these connections and during a time when many of us haven't been able to um, connect in person or have you know sort of a limited in-person connection, um, these Women Together Connects are, were ways that we could maintain that. Um, so we've had many of you join for these online connection points um, and, you know, it feels like things just change every week. Um, and so what we've been doing is in this, uh, in this time throughout July, we have invited um, teachers from our community who um, had come forward or, you know, someone wrote in and said, hey, have you heard of this person? And, um, and you know, just generously offered to share their practices. Um, so it's wonderful to have this community building and growing in all the different ways. I know many of you have brought your friends and find that a way to build a network of connection. Um, but any way that we can stay connected to each other and to deepen the internal connection for ourselves um, can make all the difference. So before we really get um, started, we have, um, we'll just do a moment of stillness to land and be fully in our own um, practice and in our own space together um, and in our in our own space wherever we are so um, I have a little singing bowl which um, we have in all Eileen Fisher conference rooms and now many of us have carried them home and have been using them to just stay grounded in between meetings or in between um, conversations Sometimes I know people are using it as a ritual between starting their day or ending their day and just kind of taking a few moments to pause and let it settle Where, wherever you are, whatever has been going on, just letting that kind of fall away and being in exactly the moment and place where you are. Um, and even just coming back to the body, coming back to this being um, on this planet in this particular moment. So we'll do just a little moment of stillness and um, the invitation is to just get the feet planted flat on the ground 
and um, just noticing the connection to earth, noticing the connection to, through the floor, um, perhaps through the seat if you're sitting. And just inhaling and exhaling, following the breath. You can close your eyes or lower your gaze if that's comfortable and you haven't done so. And as you follow the breath, just notice where it goes in. Notice the temperature on the edges of the nostrils. Notice if the breath is sort of at the top of the lungs, maybe a bit shallow, or if it's deeper. And I'll ring the chime to bring us into stillness, and I'll ring the chime to bring us back together. I feel like we could potentially just stay in that space knowing that our feet are connected to the earth and our breath is connected through the air and through our heartbeats connecting as well. Um, and I also know that we have an incredible um, session in store today um, with Rulan. And Rulan, I realize I don't have um, the correct pronunciation of your last name, but Rulan Tangen. Um, and you can correct me, <laughs> um, but she has been a founder of Dancing Earth. Um, and I love the way she describes it, moving, shaking and stomping the world into renewal. Um, so you can find more of her work at dancingearth.org. Um, but she's an incredible um, being who's been exploring movement as a language of intertribalism. And it's really rooted in um, the indigenous communities and in really exploring our path to healing. So we've been having um, a number of conversations around how do we um, shift that within ourselves and within our communities and how do we really come to a place of healing for ourselves and for, for our whole. So I'm so grateful that Rulan can be here um, and bring Dancing Earth um, to and with us. So um, thank you so much. And I pass it over to you for our practices for today. Thank you so much. It, it's an honor to be here with women. And my goal with dance is transformation and what better way to start with the daily transformation that um, we, we encounter as women daily and monthly with the moon. So I'm gonna put on some um, ambient music and native composers that I work with, most of them cultivated from reservations from age eight or 10 when I first met them. And I'm just gonna invite you, um, again, you had been standing on the floor recognizing that contact with the feet. And um, we're also gonna make contact with the hands. We extend the hands wide. They look like little communities, little um, people, and we're gonna bring them together and enjoy the sensuousness 
of touch, which is something, it's a luxury we haven't all been able to experience. And this idea of a cleansing, we're doing so much with water, asking water to cleanse and purify and protect us at this time. And just in the spirit of reciprocity, may we be able to protect and purify water when the time comes. So um, drawing down into the arms, with sort of spiral and crossing, there's no particular way that you need to do it. You don't even have to be looking at the screen. You can relax your eyes. You can just hear. We're moving up into the upper arm and shoulders. And then across the collarbone. And we can think about that collarbone like a, like a little canoe floating in water. And then around the neck, that stem like a flower that connects us. The thought down into the body. We'll be doing a lot of that today, uh, connecting imagination, thought, intention into embodiment, turning thought into action. And there's into the jaw, chin, that joint. So as we soften that joint, all of our joints can soften. Around our mouth, our communication zone. Cheekbones, you can it feels nice to just rest your palms underneath those cheekbones and then let those fingers come around the eyes and up into the scalp. Around to the base of the skull. This is usually called primitive or um, animal brain. And like many things that are called primitive or animal, it's actually something that's very precious and special. So we just want to watch our words and thoughts and uh, really acknowledge with gratitude all of these capacities we have. And then just moving down, if you're sitting or standing, just um, this cleansing, this waterfall coming down. Our first medicine, are our hands, our touch from mother to child, and even before we understood plant medicines. So speaking of plants, we're going to move into a reciprocity breath. First, let's just, again, check that you're standing on the ground. We had had that beautiful connection with earth that Antoinette said. We are also all on indigenous ground. Each one of us, if you're in New York, you're in the Lenape lands. I'm standing in occupied, unceded Tewa territories, um, known as Ogapoge, or place by the river, also called Santa Fe. So each one of us are on lands that have been danced and sung into renewal since the beginning of time. So we too can um, consider how we do that in our own way. I'm going to invite you now to bring your hands to where your ribs meet with an inhalation. This inhalation is the receiving of oxygen. And then as we exhale, you can bring your hands forward and out. It's the giving of carbon dioxide. As we inhale, we receive. And as we exhale, we give. So our hands are making two ovals ovals are circles in motion. Inhaling, receiving, exhale, giving. So by doing a breath, we are in reciprocity with the plant world, with plant relatives, because they are creating oxygen for us as we create carbon dioxide for them. So if the one thing you do today is breathe deeper, this is not only wellness for yourself, but also a greater reciprocity, a greater giving and receiving with that plant world. So this time when we exhale and bring our arms out, we're just going to change the gesture slightly so we come up and over. And then the fingers meet, and they're going to dive down like a bird. So you can actually hold your breath for a moment, and then twist when you reach the belly button, coming up and over. One more time, inhaling. And twisting open. So now our arms are starting to move in more of a figure eight, which is the spiraling of life. It's also similar to butterfly wings. That um, great symbol of transformation. One more time, inhaling. And then into exhale. 
Great, we'll bring our attention back to our feet. You can be sitting or standing for this one, but the feet can be wide. So they're starting to make a triangular shape. And then our arms, we're going to hold maybe at the shoulders so that the elbows are touching. And we're gonna slowly lift up. It becomes like a, a beak of a bird. And then a little higher overhead. So it's gonna lift our upper body up a little bit. That heart lifted up. No straining in the back of that neck. It's just gonna be a gentle uplift. And we're now with wide legs creating a mountain shape, a triangular mountain shape. At the top of the mountain, release the arms and there'll be the sun or the moon coming around the top. Let's just try that again. You can lean forward, let your head go, soften at that neck and then inhaling. We feel that front of that body stretching up, that mountain peak. You can start to feel it coming more than your arms all the way down your torso and then that sun or moon coming over that mountain peak one more time and crossing sun and or moon extending and then we're going to take the left arm which is the side of your heart we're just going to circle it around the head and we're going to caress the right ear and just let it fall so gentle lean and then if we're thinking of that top of the mountain where we just were, that's where the crystals of snow get retained through the winter. But rather than hoarding those crystals, at this time of spring and summer, there's a melting. So we're thinking of this, these crystals at the top of the mountain being shared down through that left, right arm through a melting of water. And it's going to look like a little ripple with the shoulder, a little ripple with the elbow, a little curling of the hand and then releasing that water to the ground and ripple and releasing giving that crystal to the ground one more time ripple releasing and then just pour forward letting the arms drop i'm going to try it again through the other side again wide feet touching the floor crossing the arms holding that heart and coming up and up to the point of the top of the mountain where there's snow crystals opening the arms sun or moon whichever one you need more right now and then circling that right arm caressing letting the head fall imagining those crystals those thoughts that uh, that water in crystallized form now out through the arm. Rippling through that arm. Rippling out through that arm. And coming back down. So just to give a little prompt, sometimes there might be the sound coming out or the image coming out. Don't panic. That just means that image or sound is what's meant to resonate with you for a while. So don't worry about that. That's just technology. Um, so here we have, we've had our mountain meltdown, bringing in that energy of rock, mountain, bone. That's the stability. That's the strength. So let's do it one more time. Here we go. Strong mountain, creating that stability. Light, that circling, that resting and relaxing that we need so much of. And then that rippling of giving, from giving from the top and let it come all the way down to the ground. One more time. And then melting down, connecting back down to the feet, to the ground, to the roots, and then up to the sky. Circling the arms, circling the right, ripple and release, ripple and release. That generosity of giving and being renewed through that breath, coming back down. So we come back to those hands, those healing hands. When the water hits the ground, there's a clay that's created. That creates that moist soil. So we're gonna have a little fun with this where you get to use that hand 
and as if you're shaping clay. So a lot of times we do you know, gentle touch. We did that earlier. This time, whatever you touch can move. So, so it's a little bit fun, right? You can imagine yourself as clay and you're in response. Imagine these little clay figurines from every culture. There's these ancient clay figurines of women usually very rounded, creating those shapes of the sun, the moon. And just about four more breaths of this. It could also be your feet, your legs, just this idea of co-creating. And that each touch has respect, each touch has a kindness to it. Each touch could even be infused with a little blessing of generosity, compassion, respect, joy, all the qualities that you want to infuse into your earthly experience. And then just letting that mobile, fertile soil register. And the next thing we'll be doing is creating a little seed shape. So I'm gonna do it from the side so you can take a peek if you want. What I'm gonna do is curve. Can you imagine a seed being this shape? I'm gonna do the back of the seed. I'm actually holding onto the back of my thighs to create a little traction. And then I put my hands on the front of my thighs and I arch forward. So rounding the back with an exhale, and then with an inhale, arching forward. So in this curved position, we're, we're sort of in that shelter in place, isolation, dreaming up the new reality. And then inhale, imagine what that could be. So it could be very, very small, even if you're just letting the sternum come back and the sternum come forward, recognizing these metaphors of when we rest, when we dream, when we replenish, and then we come out into the world. Exhaling. Inhaling. So many of you are in the Northeast, I'm in the Southwest, and one of the things that we have in common are um, three food groups that have sustained the original peoples of that land since the beginning of time. They are so important that they're actually named for women. They're called the Three Sisters. One of those three sisters is squash. So we're going to extend our arms and we're going to be mimicking how squash grows. Squash has big leaves that create shade on the ground. So that's the goal of the squash, to keep the water in the soil by creating shade. So what we're doing is we're creating a twist in the torso, energy out the fingers. So it's a very healthy movement for our bodies to be able to twist and detoxify the organs create more mobility through the spine. And also, as humans, it allows us to see around us, to even see behind us. So this is the squash. This is taught to us by how the squash literally grows. The next sister is beans. Beans twist. So we talked about that figure eight of life. So we can start that with our wrists. You can feel the elbows want to collaborate. They want to be involved. And then the ribs want to be involved, maybe the shoulders. Then you'd extend the hands a little wider so they're creating that twist this way. So they literally twist up around the next plant, which is corn, and they hold that plant up while the other sister squashes low to the ground, protecting the water, keeping it in the soil. Then we're gonna extend our hands and we're gonna be that, that strong, stable corn and at the very top, we're gonna to release, the, release the fingers and just let them be soft. Because we have the strength of the corn in the center and the soft hairs on top. Then we're gonna to extend into a wide V. These are the symmetrical corn leaves. And then with strength, we open up the elbows and then fold back in. We cross the arms, the body fold back in. Similar to what we did with the mountains. Coming back up straight to the center. Soft corn silk at the top. 
strong will be against this being taught to us by the form of self. These are the movements. And then crossing down. Back to our squash. Twisting. 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 So all of these are things you might have done in some kind of exercise class. But we do this, we are connecting to the sacredness, the feminine sacredness of these three plants that have sustained the people. And by doing so, we're remembering the human connection to the sacredness. It's sometimes hard to remember that humans are sacred, but we're remembering that by remembering how we tend to these three sisters. Corn in the center, soft hair, and then strong arms. There's actually a fourth sister. This comes from the Narragansett Peak Lode Island. There's three sisters who taught me this, Anemone and her two sisters. So in some places, the fourth sister is the sunflower. So in order to um, bring in the energy of sunflower, we're gonna just extend our arms wide, like we're following the sun, and we're gonna do a little rotation. So it doesn't have to be a big arch, just a little rotation of the sun flower following the sun. We'll go in it one more time in that direction, and then we'll switch directions. Imagine holding that sun in your hands, this fullness, this capacity for creation, for growth. The sunflower also has the almost magical ability to, to detoxify soil, to detoxify water. Um, it's, a, it's a transformer. So we're going to find that ourselves with a up and over, splashing open. So this open idea of being able to transform soil, transform water. This is why sunflowers are planted on sites of nuclear waste. This powerful ability of these feminine plants, these feminine power sources. And then we're going to bring up our own hands to our, let's start with our eyes. And we're going to bring in this gesture of visioning what it is we see and that it's, it's transferring into our body. So we can bend our body forward and then arch up, thought becoming action. So we're literally trying to connect with that of a change we want to see in the world. We're going to then move the hands to the neck, a change that we will articulate into the world. Sometimes that articulation is simply saying thank you. Bring our hands to our sternum, to our heart. The change we want to feel in the world. sitting if you want to take a moment to just stand up ripple yourself up and we're going to reach our hands behind at our center and forward so the hands swing behind and then they touch yourself at the center and come forward and what we're saying with this gesture is where we come from who we are and what we're offering forward so again if you can connect that to a thought of what you're offering to the world at this time and what you were receiving as we did at the beginning. That is my um, completion of my session. I thank you for so much for joining me, for joining Dancing Earth. And uh, it's my honor to work with so many women around the world connecting through the internet this time. Thank you so much, Antoinette. Thank you so much, Rulan. Um, that was even just the, the beginning of just being connected to my own body and the touch and calling in the elements um, was really powerful for me. Um, personally, and I know that there were many pieces that may have been um, really supportive to many of us in this moment. Um, and um, so thank you. Thank you, Dancing Earth. Thank you, Rulan. Um, what we'd love to do is just open up um, for questions, um, particularly, you know, I know that someone was asking about the, um, the three sisters. But any questions that you may have um, for Rulan, you can put in the chat. 
um, and I will just share them out and um, that can be in the chat on Zoom or chat on YouTube. Um, and we will bring those questions in um, just to make sure that we are honoring all of the different components of what this type of practice can actually mean or be. And often moving us back into the body um, can, can really open and enliven so much more access and knowledge um, to who we are and what's needed. So um, a lot of thanks, Rulan. So far, there are not a lot of questions yet, but, um, but let's see if anyone has questions. We'll make space for it. I can speak to the three sisters if that's OK. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so um, what I'm doing is uh, indigenous contemporary dance. It's something that didn't exist when I was a young dancer in New York. I decided that I needed to make it myself. and. Um, a lot of our native dances uh, around the world are, they're meant to be sort of kept private, they're sacred, they're ceremonial. And so I'm trying to protect those and, you know, let them be what they are. But meanwhile, translate indigenous philosophies into being. The corn beans and squash came from a very practical um, situation. It was one of the times when the dance company had no funds. We had no grants, we had no donors, we were literally hungry. But the dancers kept coming in. And so we went to farmers and we asked for donations and they gave us, um, it was summertime, we got a lot of corn beans and squash. And one of the farmers literally said, the squash, it goes down low, the beans, they kind of twist. Like he literally showed the movements that I, I shared with you. And so we wanted to honor the farmers who were so bountiful and literally learn the movements from the, the three sisters themselves rather than you know any other way. So we, we were literally, I, I think it, pioneers, they call it biomimicry. We were literally learning from the plants, which is actually a lot of how many traditional sacred ancient dances come from, whether it's, um, you know, tends to be animals, this kind of thing, but learning from the direct source. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to share that. We often do that as well with leadership. So um, I work with a lot of what we work with is ecosystem leadership. So thinking about how does an ecosystem actually work together um, and what is our place and role in that. So, um, and that's often from an embodied place as well. Um, and also thank you, Ethi, for putting the, um, the link to, um, for more information and resources um, on Rulan and Dancing Earth um, in the chat. So it's dancingearth.org and uh, more specifically the relief fund um, that, is, that is needed now. Um, there was a question in here, Rulan, about um, how we might use and share um, what you've shared with us. And just kind of as we know that knowledge has often been then sort of just taken and um, appropriated somewhere else, we wanna make sure that we're honoring that. Um, you know, so this beautiful dance that you share, the movement that you're holding um, and bringing into this community, um, could you give us a little bit more information about how, um, how we might honor our sources? Yeah, I think that's a really great question. We're in a, a new era of understanding how un, unknowingly, like maybe through the, the best of intentions, um, things can be, be, be taken or appropriated. I think the best, like it took me 20 years to even get permission to do what I'm doing, at least 20 years, and then another um, 15 years to develop the methodology. So one way is to, to grow in relationship. I, I do have online classes that I teach. Dancingearth.org is where you might find that information so that we can continue this dialogue because it may be that I can mentor a practice for yourself of maybe the plants that you're growing in your own home and so that you can develop your own methodology. It's not something that happens, you know, you know well, maybe it does. Maybe it happens in the flash of a lightning bug. But um, yeah, I just wanted to be kind of real about that. Um, there's certainly movements that are similar to what you might have done in a yoga class or another type of movement practice. But what I'm doing is bringing it, I'm calling it restorying, restorying, reconnecting, um, bringing the, you know, that consciousness into the body um, through a story that connects us to the, to the, to the world there. So um, I also see that uh, the question is whether I'm in Santa Fe. I actually call it Ogalpoge, the original name, but yes, it's more commonly known as Santa Fe which are occupied unceded Tewa lands. And I hope to honor the great farmers of this area. Not so good myself, but I'm trying to learn um, with the corn beans and squash. Beautiful, thank you. There was another question um, 
on expanding on movement through medicine um, and what we can expect there. Um, and that's from Sue in New York. Um, I, I think we, all of us in just those 20 minutes, as many people saying like, oh, I, I felt healed, I felt relaxed, I felt more open, I felt more connected to the world outside of my box here. Um, I have been you know, finding that the healing and the empowerment that comes from movement since an early age. I actually was not a gifted dancer when I was a little girl. There was nobody saying like, oh, you're, you're going to become something. I literally made that connection and, and devoted myself to movement. So I'm learning from it every day. Um, when you're asking about movement in medicine and what you can expect, you might be asking about the class that I'll be teaching this weekend or there's a summer institute that's coming up. Um, I'm, I'd be happy to talk to you more, more fully about the, that through, um, we, can, we can talk on um, email or something like that. But I'm hoping that people can come in, maybe they don't consider themselves dancers, maybe they don't, you know, they think of that something specialized, something that special people do. But we all can benefit from movement in our lives and connecting movements to our personal story, to land, to um, constellation stories. Many of us come from people with constellation stories. So I have evolved over, feels like hundreds of years, these different ways of, of connecting to these sources to um, make us strong enough to be able to be in reciprocity. Many of you women here, you might be leaders. You might be exhausted from all of the service that you do. I know I feel like that sometimes, but when I come back into movement, that's when I replenish. So I'm realizing there's a lot that's being asked of all of us at this time, especially those of us with leadership skills, but we need to be able to replenish. And sometimes that's through rest. But what I'm interested in is usually the only time we can relax is when we drop into the bed and then we're just knocked out. That's the only time we get to relax. What, would it, what, it is, it, what is it like to be relaxed and awake at the same time, awake and active and relaxed. So I'm interested in, and it's, I see someone down, is lying down with that. Many, much of this can be just envisioned, but there's physical uh, activations that happen. So I'm really glad to, to see that it can be experienced at different levels. My, my brother's in a, a, a wheelchair right now. He had a brain aneurysm two years ago. So um, this brilliant man isn't able to speak or walk at this time, but. I have to keep hoping that what I'm doing is a practice that can benefit him even through morphic resonance where you know, the, the, the goodness that I'm feeling, the empowerment, the strength can also impact him in a good way. I love that you brought up morphic resonance, um, Rulan, and just the way that our energetic experience with each other, how we're setting a social field and in a lot of what we've done in Women Together, there's this undercurrent of a social field and the community that's been developed. And, you know, Bianca, I love that you're, you know, bringing in these points of, um, of how we can each participate and how we share with one another and how we're affected. And it's interesting how in these times of social distance, how we can actually tune more clearly into that morphic field, into the way that we actually, um, affect each other by our presence. And sometimes that can be um, exhausting and draining. And sometimes it can be uplifting and inspiring and um, really, really, um, as you said, generous and, you know, an experience of reciprocity. Um, we had another question that was about um, how this kind of movement practice supports mental health um, experiences. And we know that that's going to be a major issue, um, particularly in the United States as we move forward from the COVID crisis um, or continue to move through the COVID crisis. So I'm curious um, as well, what you've seen in relation to this kind of healing and transformation work? You know, I think I'll share with you um, a practice that uh, comes from my Anishinaabe mentor. It's about a medicine wheel and you know, a circle with four points. You can think of it as four lines inside of a circle. And one of the teachings that's been shared with me has been about how the mental and the emotional, both are very important and they might pull us from side to side. So as we're having mental um, ch you know, challenges, our emotions also swing and they pull us side to side. And that in between that mind and that heart is the alignment of the spirit and the body. So when we're dancing and moving, or you know, even just standing, be like, oh, I have a body. 
I mean, I'm I, like many of you, I'm on Zoom a lot. I'm writing up grants, I'm writing funding proposals, and I can forget I have a body. But when I'm back in my body, then I have a centering point, which can allow me to weave back in those, those, those side to side without it completely tipping me off balance. So that's a sort of poetic way of um, my understanding the benefits um, towards mental health issues um, by grounding ourselves in our body. Yeah, and I, um, another one of our um, friends or sisters, Melanie Goodchild from Turtle Island Institute, um, she has shared some of the medicine wheel teachings with us as well. And um, I highly recommend, she's also um, from the Anish Anishinaabe community. And, um, and, you know, just that experience of medicine wheel and how often there are things that are out of balance and how can we come back into balance with our, within ourselves and with each other. Um, so thank you for bringing that in um, as well. So um, we are going to move into, unless there are other questions, um, still more gratitudes, which are wonderful. Um, Rulan, thank you so much. Um, but if you, um, before we go into small groups, we're going to just um, be able to connect with each other and um, and be with what has come up for us in this time of particularly being in our bodies and movement practice and slowing down. Um, but before we go into those, Rulan, I wonder if you have any um, thoughts for us to infuse that conversation. Um, and as we move um, away from our YouTube community, we'll be saying goodbye to that uh, group and um, know that we're in conversation and connection with each other in the Women Together uh, conversation space. But before we um, we do make those transitions, do you have any other thoughts for us, Rulan? Yes, I'm going to weave in um, Carolyn's question. So um, there was the, the giving and receiving, which we started at the beginning, and then I lightly touched on it towards the end, but I didn't want to overtake time. It was about what's behind us and what's in front of us. And we can interpret that in different ways, like what is behind us, like where do, where do we come from? Who do we come from? What do we come from? That might not all be something we want to take forward, or it may be something we want to honor. There may be both. And how those inform us to be able to have something to offer or a vision to bring forward of justice or kindness or women centering in the world forward. So I'd love to have these little tiny futurity salons where people can get together and be like, here's what I've come to this earth with and here's what I can give because we each are coming from different places. And so we, by definition, we're diverse in the circle and what has come behind us informs what we have to give. So um, yeah, a little futurity visioning would be awesome. That sounds wonderful. I'm up for it. <laughs> um, so maybe as we go into these breakouts, um, for those who would like to stay for those connections, um, they really are uh, a real reason for being for us the, to make the connection and just be able to kind of let down our hair and be with each other. Um, so we'll move into small breakout groups of about four or five people, and we'll stay in them for about 12 minutes at this point. Um, which should give everybody a couple minutes to at least speak and start to get to know each other. Um, but maybe a little bit of where do we come from um, and, and what are we honoring in our past um, and what do, what do we have to bring to the world? Uh, I think that's a really wonderful uh, prompt for us to move in. So just a couple of reminders um, to really recognize that we each have different pasts, we each have different experiences, we don't even know what we each had for breakfast this morning, and that's okay. Um, and that we can make space and hold, um, hold each other at our highest potential, and really uh, offer a space of generous listening, really deeply listening to each other. Um, and within our short time of 12 minutes um, to connect with each other, um, in these, in these breakout rooms. And, um, the only thing I'll say is to try and let each person go, meaning everybody speaks once before you speak twice. So enjoy your time and breakouts together. And thank you so much to the YouTube community, um, who will sign off from in just a few moments. Um, for those of you in Zoom, you'll see a breakout box pop up and you can join in and say hello and meet, uh, some of the community. We'll see you back here in 12 minutes. Enjoy. <laughs>